Welcome to another CHRO Conversation hosted by the Center for Executive Succession at the Darla Moore School of Business. I'm your host, Anthony Nyberg, and today we are speaking with Heidi Capozzi, Senior Vice President of HR and a member of the Executive Council for Boeing. In her role, Heidi is responsible for leadership development, training, workforce planning, employee relations, compensation, benefits, and diversity initiatives for the world's largest aerospace company, consisting of about 150,000 employees located in 150 different countries. So Heidi, thank you very much for joining us. It's a great treat and honor for us to have you here in Columbia. Can you start by telling us a little bit about some of the real strategic challenges that Boeing is facing these days? Yeah. Well, first of all, it's, it's a pleasure to be here, so thank you for inviting me. Um, you know, when I think about um, challenges or challenges that could be in our way of achieving our strategic objectives, the first thing that comes to mind, of course, is talent. And my CEO will talk all the time about this always comes back to talent and having the right talent. So that makes uh, a big difference in terms of not just who we select for certain roles, which, you know, HR has got a huge, uh, you know, uh, remit to handle, but um, how do we think about um, making sure that this company has access to the right skills and capabilities to grow our company for the future? Future. We like to talk a lot about Boeing 2025 and envisioning what the company will be in that time frame. It's given us a great platform of which to talk about Workforce 2025. Again, what are those crit critical skills that will be key to driving performance? Um, where do we need them to be in the world? When will we need them? And are we currently positioned in such a way so as to be able to attract, develop, and retain them for the organization? And so that's a huge area where we are, um, you know, uh, sort of orchestrating the organization to ensure that we've got that readiness. The other thing I might mention is, um, you know, for a hundred-year-old company like Boeing, that um, our speed and agility, our culture, in fact, is uh, is potentially an inhibitor to achieving strategic objectives if we don't think about that the right way. And so, one of the things that we are working on, in conjunction with our CEO and senior leadership team, is really thinking about how we drive things like agility and speed into our organization that is sometimes heavily processed and a little bit more conservative in terms of taking risks. That's an area, obviously, we don't own the culture as HR, but we are stewards of it and we bring great tools and capabilities to help the organization work in such ways that we'll be able to accelerate performance for the future. And what are some of the things that HR does to, to help create a culture of agility and speed, as you've described? Well, I think it can come in a lot of forms. I mean, part of this is making sure that we've got awareness of what specifically the issues are that we're looking to change about our culture, because there are a lot of great things about the culture that we have today that we want to maintain. I think part of it is about thinking about organization structure. Are there different ways that we could structure the team, maybe removing layers that help us be faster, help communication flow more quickly. I think there's something about capabilities um, uh, that we can um, bring to leaders and to teams to um, help them work differently, perhaps. So a lot of it's been awareness, personalization, driving the right conversations, and then taking some tools to actually make changes to the structure of the organization, maybe even bring in new talent that will help us um, sort of uh, think about and work differently. So it sounds like a lot that H your HR professionals have to do. They have to help actually get all of this great yeah. talent, help fix or keep the culture going strong, yep. make these changes. What are some of the key issues that you're looking for in your HR talent? Well, we've had this conversation with some of the students earlier today. Honestly, um, I think uh, first and foremost, I would put business acumen at the, at the lead. We talk a lot about being business leaders first and also HR professionals. So whether that's, um, you know, the, what, the way someone studies or thinks about their education, also taking opportunities to step outside of HR to really understand the business and how your business makes money, because that's going to be the, some of the levers you're trying to pull to advance the cause. Um, you know, in the space of HR, obviously, uh, there's a lot to know about that, um, you know, that field. I think today, some of the skills that I talk to folks about relate to um, organization effectiveness, so whether that's change management or coaching things along those lines, certainly um, people analytics and how you use analytics in the, in the function to really gain insight into the business and make better business decisions. Uh, all of these would be, you know, I think more emerging but certainly critical um, capabilities inside of an HR skill set. Beyond that, I would talk about just the uh, willingness and ability to continuously learn. Um, you know, I think in, an, in a world that is changing so quickly, 
we as business leaders need to be thinking about how do we help our organization adapt. So that curiosity, that desire to learn about new things and continue to evolve one's skill set is, you know, is absolutely critical. How, how do you help de develop some of that in your own people after they come in? I mean, even the business acumen or curiosity or any of these things? Well, I think, um, I think from a development perspective inside the organization, we certainly do advocate for people to take rotational opportunities into different parts of the function, into different aspects of business. Uh, we bring formal learning. That's one of the things that I think Boeing does exceptionally well in is through our um, educational reimbursement, we pay for certifications, degrees, we have a leadership center. We invest a ton in allowing people to continue to grow in their in their professional capabilities. So once you have a desire, I think there's a, a ready set of resources for you. Um, I would also say though it's not all about internal development. I think we think about the skills that we need and sometimes go to market to bring in people who have new capabilities. This whole idea of culture change was something that um, we knew we needed to also go outside and bring in folks who had done similar work and maybe more steeped in it than some of the uh, some of the teams. So we've learned a lot, uh, you know, as an organization from them, and they've brought new capabilities into the function. So Boeing is such an amazing company with tremendous history. Do you have challenges in finding the, the greatest talent that, and all the talent that you need? You know, I would say uh, we have a great advantage. I mean, we have a wonderful brand. And when you think about the things that Boeing does in the world, uh, there's a lot of people who would raise their hand and want to come to work for Boeing. And we do find that we've got, you know, high acceptance rates and low turnover. One of the things I think we're challenged in is ensuring that we uh, get enough diversity, and particularly in our technical skills. Um, it's a huge priority for us, and you know there just aren't enough diverse candidates graduating or coming out with the you know the degrees and the capabilities that we're looking for. Again, particularly in those STEM areas. So I would say that the HR function plays in here in, in a big way, um, not just by helping to influence universities around you know, here, the kinds of skills and, and talent that we want, um, but all the way down through the K through 12 education system. And um, you know, how do we help influence public policy and how do we take the resources we have as a company, like our incredible engineers, to go and mentor students in school or to help shape curriculum that, that teachers can use to spark you know, interest in kids who are uh, potential future rocket scientists, for example. So um, you know, getting uh, diverse talent um, is, I think, a challenge that we that we face. The other thing I would say is just continuing to make sure that we have a, a great experience as we go out to recruit and hire employees. Again, a place that potentially can be a bit over-processed and we're really thinking about all of our HR services as being people-centric and trying to look at things from the perspective of those that we're serving and how do we make that an engaging uh, and exciting experience. So you've now been in your role as Chief Human Resource Officer for a little over a year, right? Mm -hmm. Can you tell us some of the things that maybe surprised you as you moved into that role or, or some of the things that you found really interesting or challenging? Yeah, I think, you know, the advice I got from my predecessor was um, you never really get to see the responsibility that this job has around governance and working with the board of directors until you're actually in the chair. And I think that was spot on advice. So a lot of the um, early months of my tenure were spent in getting to know and building relationships with the members of the board because of course the my, my job has responsibility for the compensation committee and the governance committee of the company so um, a lot that surprised me in that space i would say um, i think another is uh, just how um, much influence someone in my position can bring to things like public policy and the importance of understanding issues like immigration and um, and health care and ways that we can play beyond the walls of our organization to influence um, government, et cetera, to the benefit of our companies. Um, maybe last but not least, I guess, is, you know, it, sometimes it feels like um, only the hard things get to you in this job. <laughs> if, they're, if they're happy things or easy things, they get taken, uh, taken care of someplace else. Uh, a lot of challenging things to work on. Um, I think I have the benefit of working for a company that leverages HR uh, and understands the, the power that it can bring to the table. So um, while they're hard things, they're oftentimes very interesting things I get to work on. 
Well, and one of the things you mentioned is that as you moved into this role was having to deal with the board and being mm -hmm. on the uh, executive leadership team. Can you describe, are there, if there are any differences, what those might be between the CHRO's role on the executive leadership team versus maybe some of the other roles? Well, I think there's something about um, being an advi a trusted advisor and coach, not just to the CEO, but really to the leadership team, and worrying about, thinking about, and assisting with the dynamics to create a high-functioning team at that level of the organization. Um, certainly, I bring different uh, capabilities and perspectives. Um, you know, thinking about um, the talent strategy for the company may not be the first and foremost thing that's coming out of the CFO's mouth, but um, you know, I think um, combining an understanding of the business with the capabilities of my professional background, um, you know, help me to to con contribute in some of the same ways, but also in different ways. And one of the interesting things I think I heard you say was helping develop the team itself, mm -hmm. the executive leadership team. So that makes it sound like you're the, kind of a coach of the uh, leadership team. Yep. I mean, that's not something we often think yeah. about it outside, but yeah. is, is there some of that team building among that absolutely. group? Absolutely, absolutely. And I think if any CHRO is being honest, there's there's definitely a part of that that is you know important to the job. And if you think about it, our ability to work together as a senior team is critically important, not just in terms of modeling how we want everybody else in the organization to work, but in, you know, in our effectiveness and making decisions quickly and things along those lines. I'll mention that um, you know, we just had a half day offsite with our senior team that I had the responsibility for designing and helping to deliver uh, with our CEO so that, again, we're focusing on the health of our team and um, you know, driving the kinds of behaviors in ourselves that we want in our organization. And that's an important part of the job. Another interesting, to me, really interesting thing that you touched on was you'd mentioned being able to possibly affect policy. And mm -hmm. how do you balance your role of, of running this massive organization with also, like you talked about, trying to help STEM education from K through yeah. 12? And, how, how do you how do you balance all the local constituencies as well as shareholders and the yeah. board and everything else? Yeah. Well, I think you really have to be conscientious about how you're spending your time, and I think there is a an evolution of that. So I mentioned early on in my tenure, really focusing a lot on the board, and I think the outside in, you know, making sure I was establishing relationships with other CHROs, so I had a ready, you know, stable of friends and helpers <laughs> as I uh, as I got started in my job. Um, and then, you know, I think it evolves into maybe working a little bit more on our team. My team is in the process of transforming our function to better serve the business. Um, so th being very conscientious, I guess, in terms of how you're using your time. I would say, though, that there's a lot of helpers. So I don't alone think about things like influencing immigration and health care. Um, I partner with our government operations organization on that, and, uh, and we, work, we work together on some of those issues. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of a lot of additional resources at play. Um, I will say, you know, community involvement is a key priority for us. We just recently finished sort of reimagining our global corporate citizenship and focused in on priorities that really are key to our company. One I've talked about, which is education. The other is veterans. Uh, we have a, obviously a huge um, uh, customer set that is the military. We protect our military and, and other governments' militaries. Um, in, uh, in serving uh, the country. And so um, making sure that they transition smoothly, that their families are taken care of is another priority area for us. And then enabling our employees to invest back in the communities that we, we do work in ways that really are meaningful to the community. I'm amazed at the breadth of what your job is. So when you were talking about the differences of, of I mean, I think you really downplayed it, potential differences of the CHR role for, versus some of the others, like yeah. CFO. Yeah. But in, I can't imagine that all of those, all of the other executive leadership team members have this extraordinary breadth where you're talking about really checking on them in local communities and education. And you talked about immigration policy as well as overseeing your yeah. 300,000 plus employees yeah. around the world, et cetera. Well, the thing I would say on that is this is where the team you have matters so much. I've, I've known that, I've experienced that in other roles I've had 
there's no role that brings it as close to home as a role like I have today, and I'm sure my colleagues on the Executive Council would say the same thing. So uh, I have tremendous leaders who work for me, and as I mentioned, I think this ability to partner with my uh, chief technology officer when it comes to how do we invest in STEM education in, in schools, uh, my government operations leader in terms of influencing policy, uh, nobody does it alone. There's a, a strong partnership there. That's incredible. So as is not at all surprising, it's been a great treat for us to have you here and for, for me personally. So thank you very much. For Absolutely. Joining. Thank you for having me. You just listened to another CHRO conversation. Today, Heidi Capozzi of Boeing shared her perspectives about how to create an effective HR function and its importance in driving the success of every organization. This was a sincere treat, and on behalf of all of us who are associated with the Masters of Human Resource Program here at the University of South Carolina and the Center for Executive Succession, thank you for joining us.